Welcome to the On Second Watch podcast, and thank you for joining us today. This episode covers our official review of 1980's The Fog, after we've all rewatched this film, or in the case of myself and Dana, we've watched it for the first time. Now, before we begin, I just have to say that if I didn't know better, I would have thought the ghost pirate Blake and his crew of the Elizabeth Dane were trolling us, just as they were the townspeople of Antonio Bay. I mean, we had audio quality issues throughout, people dropping connections mid-recording, Spaz's brothers showing up at the wrong times, just like Jamie Lee Curtis's character, uh, Spaz himself trying to outdrink the fisherman that kicked this movie off. Uh, somehow we pieced it all together, and uh, we survived. So hopefully you can laugh along with us on this one. Also, if you want access to exclusive content, take a look at our Kofi page as we have video recordings of our How Would Sean Bean Have Died episodes premiere there, and also access to supporter-only posts and invites to join us in future recordings. You can also commission us to review a movie of your choice or take a look at our Kofi shop to pick up some On Second Watch swag. And finally, before we jump into this review, I just wanted to invite you to share your nostalgia for our upcoming review of the ultimate family-friendly Halloween movie, Hocus Pocus. Now, I am absolutely determined to make this one our best episode ever, and we need your help. You can share your thoughts about this film on any of our social media accounts by emailing onsecondwatch at outlook.com, or best yet, you can record your thoughts at oswpodcast.com, and we'll add your audio recording to our episode. Thank you for all your support, and happy Halloween. All right, let's jump into this episode and see what Spaz sounds like after drinking uh, a few pints of, I don't know, 40-year-old Captain Blake's The Fog Rum or something like that. In a world of big-budget blockbusters, travel back in time to explore the epic and not-so-epic movies of yesteryear. Join Tim, Chris, Dana, Carrie, and Spaz on their adventures through Nostalgia Land. This is On Second Watch, a movie nostalgia podcast. What up, folks in podcast world? <laughs> no. Do you want to host this? I mean, we're doing the fog up in this bitch. <laughs> uh, hey, if, if that didn't give you an idea what this episode's going to be like, I don't know what will. You saucy minx. Jesus. What? what you... <laughs> uh, sorry, uh, that, was, okay. that was to the beer. Yes, I'm sure. It I was. Sure. No, that actually was. I'm, I would never say that to your wife. I'm sure you wouldn't. All right. Uh huh. <laughs> I've never called her a saucy minx. Usually I call you or Chris that. Dude, when we got married on our wedding thing, you wrote down, there's still time. <laughs> Tim, there is. There's always time, damn it. Oh, wait. Stana. <laughs> Oh, that's horrifying. <laughs> Dude, happy Halloween, bitches! <laughs> nah. Okay, I hope you're saving that one, too. Oh, I'm going to say that for every uh, episode in October. Oh, Don't man. You guys have so screwed me over. <laughs> no. No, this is all oh. out of love, man. Oh, okay. Well, if it's out of love, that's cool. I'll, I'll, we're good. You're doing it all yourself, oh. buddy. I know. I, that's what happens. Yes. What I have to say first is that when we sat down to watch this movie, uh, I think I was I was looking for it on any streaming service, and there was it wasn't anywhere yeah. for free, so we had to jump on Amazon Prime and pay the pay the money for it. Yep, same here. And uh, I, the quote that Dana had that I have to share is, "We had to pay for this shit." It's gonna be a damn- <laughs> <laughs> it, better, it better be a damn good movie. <laughs> oh, that's fantastic. So, uh, oh, that's we, fantastic. I haven't paid for anything positive. in a really long time. So I've had to pay for every single movie so far, so. Oh. What? Yeah, so. What's up? So it was, it was, uh, yeah, I, I just thought that we just kind of started off in the, the wrong direction, but. <laughs> Yeah, it sounds like this is going to go Yeah, I know, well. yeah. It seems like Dana's going to love this movie. <laughs> I cannot confirm or deny anything. So why don't we why don't we talk about uh, the new experience? I don't know if you guys want uh, Dana and I go first, since this is our first time seeing this, or... No. Uh... <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> yes, no! Yeah. I want Dana to go first now! Yep. Nope. 
my god that was just like a fast no and it's like no nope. damn dana i want to hear what you got to say i'm still sticking with no <laughs> tim can go i'm no tim yeah I'm interested yeah all right I'm interested get, yeah i never go first i, yeah, I know that's no, maybe, kind of, it's kind of nice that you go first yeah maybe this time you should all right fine i'll go first um so while watching this i feel like uh I, I couldn't help myself but think, okay, so the ghosts are coming back 100 years after they are they were plotted against and, you know, destroyed and the town was founded. Like, do they have, like, a calendar and a clock that soon as midnight hits, <laughs> suddenly the ghosts roll in? I'm thinking, like, they had 100 years to plan this thing accurately. They got so, their outlook reminder. Right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Notifications going off, guys. Yep. Hey. D- ding, ding. <laughs> and I feel like these ghosts are like the biggest trolls ever. I mean, not not they don't show up right away, but first, you know, you got church bricks exploding off the, the church, and you got payphones all going off. So they have some concept of technology, I guess, if payphones are going off. Yeah. You got glass shattering, some type of earthquake, gas pump falls off, the car starts lifting in the air. I mean, I made a list of all the weird things that were happening. It's like, these ghosts... Plan this out for a hundred years to just troll these, <laughs> these citizens. <laughs> See, Tim, you could have done a uh, over under right there. I, mean, I didn't know this was going to happen. <laughs> 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 like, how many ways did the ghosts troll the citizens before they, uh, they started killing people? Yeah, and then so the part of the thing that confused me was that the whole thing around was six, six people had to die to make up for this this i guess the six people on the ship that were killed six no it was the six conspirators oh the six conspirators yeah that's right yeah, yeah. they kill off three between midnight and 1 a.m okay so they're they're halfway there it's like wow we just i guess we did it too fast let's wait <laughs> <laughs> let's wait 12 hours guys we went way too fast <laughs> this is this isn't as fun as i thought it was gonna be <laughs> <laughs> let's let's let the dogs bark until six a.m. So, so they went back to sleep, you know, to bide their time. And then I, you get to the, uh, let's see. After things started going to hell again, the fog started coming back. So number four was killed. It was the uh, the weather guy, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. So right away, when the fog starts rolling, they kill him. Yeah, Dan. Why would you kill anybody named Dan? I can think of a million reasons. Yeah, oh my god, Tim, how <laughs> dare you? <laughs> how That's, dare you? That's okay, it's my middle name too, so we're alright. Oh. oh shit, is it? <laughs> it is. Yep. God damn, I've known you this long, and you probably told me 80 times. But Probably. Yeah, there you go. Okay, never mind. So they kill him, so that's number, f- that's number four. And they kill the old lady, that's pretty brutal. <sighs> number five. But then I'm confused because then it just seems like everybody's a potential victim and they're really trying to get only the descendants. So they're, they're, uh, they're scrambling. No, I don't know. Yeah. See, in uh, the 2005 version, the better version. Ugh, Whoa. Wow. Yeah, okay. No, I'm just kidding. I was waiting for that reaction. I actually, I, didn't they do it a lot smoother in that? Though? Don't I honestly cannot remember anything from the 2005. Yeah, neither can I. I thought they did it a lot smoother than what they did in 1980. So, I don't know. So, yeah, I, I, I don't have an answer. Like, <laughs> um, this movie is interesting as far as the plot goes. It is, it is certainly not good. <laughs> 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 um, you know, don't get me wrong. I, I enjoy John Carpenter. I really do. But like I've seen a few specials on this, and actually I watched a couple last night because my dad and I watched this, um, and then we watched some of the specials on uh, the, the anniversary edition. And the movie, the main reason he made this movie is like John Carpenter wanted a story about the fog. The fog is a character. They wanted to make it a character. Mm-hmm. Like, and then like I'm pretty sure like the plot and such came later. The main focus was like I want to make a movie about fog as as a character in this movie it was an entity and then afterwards came the plot and what's really funny is when they first showed the first viewing it was too short for a theatrical release so a ton of stuff was added on after the fact the payphone scenes the the jump scares the whole entire campfire story in the beginning Hmm. after the main movie was already Mm -hmm. shot yeah because you know what i 
I was telling Dan, it's like, man, this movie is way too long. This could have been done in 40 minutes. Oh, yep. yeah. I don't know what the original cut was, but I think the minimum you need for a theatrical release is 80, 80 minutes. Or okay. no, excuse me. That would have been, uh, I think originally it was 80 minutes. It was only 120 minutes. And I think it needs to be longer than that. Longer than an hour 20? Hour 20, yeah. Yeah, yeah I just, there was there was some stuff that was just like, okay, some the visuals and what he was doing, I, I you know, I can appreciate that, but it just, it felt like it went on way too long. Yeah. yeah. And my, my big problem is, they, so like they killed, they killed the three guys at the beginning. I feel like they, they killed off way too many people to start. Oh yeah. They got halfway through the list in the first 15 minutes. Um, and then by the time the fog rolls in, it seemed like the final 15, 20 minutes of the movie, it's like, it's all this build up, And then it's just like a, a race to the end, which I, I wish there was, there was more of the ghosts themselves. And, you know, it's like, I don't know. Cause I, I think that how they created those monsters, it was, was kind of cool. Just the eeriness of them. Yeah. And Hey, they were the most polite ghosts ever. They literally knocked on every door. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> it just, it just reminds me of the home improvements uh, scene where he's just like knocking. He's like, let me in. Right. Let me in. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Yeah, it's um. God, I was, I was reading about it too. Cause if I remember correctly, like they never really had any close-up shots of the ghosts, and it was until like afterwards, like producers and such were like, you know, because they were vying for you know popularity back then, and you know there was more graphic, scarier movies in 1980. And I remember, if I remember correctly, I think the producers was like, you need to have like scary close-up shots of the ghosts, like in particular that one scene with like the worm face. Yeah, like yeah. that was never in it. That was all done like at at the end. Yeah. Well, th- th- to be honest with you, it's kind of kind of uh, like the beginning, like with not seeing any of the creatures until I don't know. Kind of reminded me of, like the signs a little bit because mm-hmm. you were able to see like hands and feet and a little bit of a body structure of it. And but in, like till the very end of it, that's when you got to see like the features of what was attacking you and stuff like that. Yeah. I mean, I that's I'm sorry, Chris, go ahead. No, I was going to say, I, I, yeah, I mean, I, we could, we could punch holes in this plot because it is like paper thin. Yeah. Oh yeah. But you know, I, I couldn't help but to think after watching this film that even though I felt like I, I could have used more of it, uh, that was just more substantial. It's like, I felt, man, I, I'd, I'd really love to just remake this movie myself. Oh, dude! Yeah, just like I feel like you could you could go in a million different directions and mm-hmm. and and you kind of expedite the story in a way that it's it doesn't feel like there's this huge forty minute gap of like nothing. <laughs> Carrie, Dana, I want to I want to hear your guys' opinions. Oh, Dana gets to go first. All right, I- I'll accept now. <laughs> um, so it's better than. Big Trouble in Little China for me. But I think I'm maybe just not a fan of John Carpenter. Sorry, Chris. That's, you that's, can, you... No, that's totally fair. <laughs> but I, I mean, mean, you saw... What? Have you... You've seen Halloween, though, right, Dan? Or no? No. I, so, uh, I only have two movies to go off of, so that might not yeah, be fair. Yeah, yeah. I would rather... Like, seriously, before you completely write them off, the ones that we've we've watched are not... Yeah, they're... Uh, they're like, not as tip top. They're not his best stuff. Yeah, I would watch Halloween and then I would watch The Thing. The Thing, yes, I agree with Chris on both of those accounts. The Thing is, I think, probably one of his best films. Yes, if not the I, best film, I would probably be able to give those two a chance just for the fact that I've actually heard of them before this podcast. So that probably might make it a little bit easier to take it in. Yeah. Um, I mean, I don't know. I mean, I, that being said, like, if I would have seen this before Big Trouble, I think I'd have a much different view of John Carpenter because it wasn't, it, it wasn't the same. It it was definitely. Uh, uh, I'm trying to think of the right way to word it. Mm, it was it was definitely better done, but um, yeah. Well, I mean, it just wasn't my my thing. Well, this one, <laughs> it, it wasn't. Rushed like uh, Big Trouble in Little China was, so he had a little bit more. No, but it still wasn't. I would actually rather prefer Big Trouble in Little China over Fog. To be honest, with I, you. I do feel me. I 
Yeah, I do feel like um, he got a lot of inspiration for his his music for Big Trouble from this movie, though. But it, or vice versa. See if you oh, that, if you that, saw that, the if you saw that. Halloween, Dana, you would right. you would say most of this music he was should have been or is part of Halloween. That's every part of the like the soundtrack I heard. It was like, oh my god, this is. Am I watching that's Halloween because, again? That's, that's because John Carpenter does the music in almost yeah, all his movies. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And he I loves his feel, synthesizers. Yeah, I kind of feel like he does um, pulls like a Michael Bay and kind of recycles his stuff. Oh, yeah, for sure he does. Oh, he And, you know, like whatever, the, uh, to each their own. But, um, I mean, I, I, I did watch the whole movie. <laughs> that's good. So, I mean, <laughs> I just, right on. it's not like with Big Trouble where I literally at one point was like, I can't keep doing this. <laughs> <laughs> so, I mean, it was your typical 80s cheesy kind of thing going on. Yeah. And, it's a popcorn you know, flick. Oh, yeah, for sure. Exactly. Um, I, I would have much preferred to see this first. Yeah, I, I'm not going to be as uh, negative as with Big Trouble, but... It just wasn't my thing, and, and that's not not necessarily a knock at it. So, yeah, I think, yeah, no, I don't think so. I mean, even yeah, even me rewatching, it, I was like, don't be wrong. Like nostalgia wise, like enjoying the movie with like my dad and stuff is like a blast. Like from a purely like, is this a good movie? <laughs> <laughs> okay, you said it too, so that's okay then. <laughs> yeah, like even when I was watching it last night, I was like. I forgot. This does drag hard. <laughs> like I was like I was like dozing off. I was like, and I and I like it. And I was like, oh my god, I forgot this thing. Yeah, it, it, like there is no even pace. It is like snail's pace at times to like what is going on and like really this is where we're going. But like for me, it like there's a nostalgia factor that you know my dad enjoys it. I you know I enjoy. It. I think it's kind of fun. That's what amped it up for me a little bit. But yeah, by all means, this is not like yeah. a good movie, you know. Well, I think this is also, you know, a crystal clear example of not necessarily nostalgia impacting your thoughts on it. But the fact is that even if it's not a good movie, you still enjoyed watching it with your dad because that's the first exactly. thing you saw it was you saw yeah. it with your dad. So it has some meaning to it beyond just the film itself. Right, so exactly, exactly. It- Exactly. That I was, I was um, feeling that way too. Just like from listening to you talk about it um, on the first part of the episode, I was just like, I can see why it meant a lot to you. Just the fact it's like you got all these really good memories with it, and that's kind of the cool thing about this podcast. <laughs> you know? mm-hmm. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, I got plenty of plenty of old movies that mean more to me just because of where they were at, in my life when I watched them. Mm-hmm. Even if they're not a good movie, it's in my head they they stand a certain test of time exactly exactly uh, carrie you've been awfully quiet <laughs> uh, <laughs> not carrie uh, oh hey everybody uh yeah i'm 100 percent on the same page as dana and that's kind of what i figured i'll be honest uh, <laughs> yes. i am not a john carpenter fan at all and i think that was resonated with my score and actually i've actually seen most of john carpenter's movies including like escape from new york and stuff so so uh, okay see i don't even i don't i don't like escape from new york that much i mean yeah, most people i actually think i like that better than like some of the others like for i i don't know maybe it's just it, it could just be the 80s thing right so kind of like you're talking about yes. with like pacing his movies just really drag for me like and I think sometimes when I do watch older movies, especially like scarier, like thriller movies from then, I don't know what it is, but I just find that they're like less exciting <laughs> than sure. perhaps more modern ones are. And that's not to fall. It's just kind of a sign of the times. But um, mm-hmm. have you seen The Thing, though, Carrie? That's the only one I haven't seen. Oh, my gosh. Like, so it's funny. I mean, like, and and it's totally fair. You know, if you guys aren't John Carpenter's fan, of that, I get that. Like. Uh, but I do think, like, before you completely write them off, like, you should definitely watch The Thing. Because to, to me, The yeah. Thing and Halloween are probably, like, his top two, like, best. Like, Halloween, and even Halloween, in my opinion, it does, it's it's slow at times. It mm-hmm. is. Because it was on AMC um, a couple nights ago, and I was watching part of it. And I was like, it, it those long, panding shots of like jamie lee curtis and like her girlfriends like walking down the street for like you know 10 15 20 minutes of the movie like it it drags a little bit whereas i think the thing is such a tense horror thriller 
that even if it feels like it's dragging, it's not because it's, you're so tense because of the way what the movie's about. And that was done in 1984. So um, definitely give that a shot before you completely write them off. Do not watch, though, John Carpenter's Vampires, which I made the mistake of watching part of it last night and then turned it off 30 minutes into the movie because I knew going in it was one of his worst movies ever made. But oh my God, even I have a limit. <laughs> <laughs> it even has James Sorry. Wood and Daniel Baldwin. And I'm like, yes, yeah, not Alec Baldwin, Daniel Baldwin. Uh, See, the thing, I'm with Chris. The thing is awesome. I love the thing. I haven't seen it in a long time, but it's a good movie. No, it is. It's a good movie. Unlike John Carpenter's Vampires. Oh, that was so bad. I was watching. Oh, yeah, I was watching it last night for a little bit. Why would you do that to yourself? Because I was on a John Carpenter kick. I watched The Fog, and I was like, "What haven't I seen?" I was like, "Chris, I don't think, no. I, don't think I've ever seen this." And I was like, "I knew going in, it was going to be terrible." Chris, Everyone we watched it, was it together, terrible. man. Maybe I blacked it out of my mind because it was that bad. <laughs> yeah, it's coming back to me now. I'm regretting that we did. It that. was so bad. I, well, oh. that was like that was eight, nine years ago. I did remember it, and I'm watching this again. I'm like, "Oh my god, this movie is a like just a dumpster fire." It's so bad. It's kind of like the bats that you took me to see in the theater. First off, you know what? You leave that movie alone. <laughs> you know what? Bats, bats is great. It was an okay. I'm not. It was an okay movie. It was a. It was good. I actually, I didn't enjoy that movie a lot. Bats is bats is absolutely terrible. Come on, it had Lou Diamond Phillips in it. Exactly. That's why. Well, that's what made the movie good. It's, Genetically muted bats escape, and it's, it's up to a bat expert or a local sheriff to stop them. I mean, come on. It's like Never that, get any better uh, than that. It's like that uh, movie with the angels and um, Legion. Legion, yeah. It had uh, what? Paul Bettany. Yeah, it had Paul Bettany in it, so you know it had to be good because Paul Bettany was in it. And Dennis Quaid. Fuck, he was in it too. That's right. Mm-hmm. Tyrese Gibson. It was no way. Adriana Pagel. I'm going through it right now. Yeah. Oh my god. Oh my god. Why was that? Why was that that movie so bad? I don't know. It had a bunch of good actors in it. The tagline's amazing. It had a bunch of good actors in it. Hold on to your halo. It's about to get biblical. (laughs) Yeah, dude. Chris used that. You use that so much. That was the only good thing from that movie. (laughs) So you're dead on because you you brought it up our in part one. Yeah, I did. Yep. Yeah, I'm I'm bringing it back. (laughs) So that's another. This horse ain't dead yet. (laughs) <laughs> how how did Sean Bean die in the Legion? He was at a gas station. That's it. It's a diner? God. Well, we're not going to review that movie, so we will never know. <laughs> Joke's on you. It's okay. Wow. It's okay. I'm paying us to review it. Tim brought the heat on that bitch. Uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to pay us to watch it anonymously. <laughs> Dude, I will never watch the Legion again in my life. <laughs> Ever. <laughs> Not for no podcast. I will never watch that movie. But if it's for this podcast, I would. So (laughs) please, for the love of God, nobody (laughs) spend your money to make us watch that movie. No, no. If anyone's going to spend any money, I sincerely hope, if anyone's listening, that, you know, uh, Batman and Robin. No. (laughs) (laughs) That is one horse we will never (laughs) consider. We're not going to do it on our own. I guarantee you that. Oh, we will. Not with that attitude. Going back to the fog, uh-huh. uh, there were two quotes that I thought were the funniest things I've heard in a long time. <laughs> oh, yes! Um, and I had to bring them up. So, Chris, maybe you know what I'm talking about. I, uh, I think I have an idea. So, one of them was when the kid runs up and says, Hey, Mom, can I have a stomach pounder and a Coke? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yep. Yeah. A- after lunch. That was freaking hilarious. I don't even know Dana, what a stomach pounder is. So yeah, Dana and I were laughing our asses <laughs> off at that. So she had to look it up. And Dana, do you remember what it was? Um, wasn't it like some type of an exercise? Yes. Can Dana, I have a pounder. stomach pounder? Yeah, it was what? a stomach pounder. It was it was like an exercise or some exercise like, program that John Carpenter thought sounded like an amazing food item. So he worked it into the script for that kid to say it. Way to go, John Carpenter. Thank <laughs> you for that one. What? I laughed my ass off when I heard that. I was like, oh my god. This is, not made for two, this is not made for this is not made for twenty twenty. Oh yeah, that's fucking it's, hilarious. It's a gym exercise, not a food. I'm John Carver said it was a joke, but he's glad that people still talk about it. Yeah, because no one had any idea what a stomach, stomach pounder, pounder was. Is that like crunches? Who knows? I doubt it's got to be that. like crunches or sit ups or something. I think that like it's all just made up. 
His <laughs> stomach pounder. I laughed my ass oh. off when I heard that. And my, my <laughs> other favorite quote was at the beginning when uh, the, th- the three three guys are on their boat. And the guy is looking out on his binoculars. He's like, see, what did he say? He says, there's no fog bank out there. There's no fog bank out there. Hey, there's a fog bank out there. <laughs> <laughs> what? Uh-uh. <laughs> What's happening? <laughs> <That was late. laughs> Yeah, I just like the part where they're like, we need to leave. He's like, I'm drunk enough. Right. <laughs> so you guys heard that enough for me. So, like, yeah, there's some of these quotes in these movies is just like, it's like god awful. Like, I like the part where it's just like the whole unnecessary, um, the unnecessarily uh, complicated plot of like Tom Atkins driving down the road, random hitchhiker. Oh, it's Jamie Lee Curtis. Oh, we're gonna play the awkward name game and like not talk about our other's names. Next scene. Naked in a bed. <laughs> yes, exactly. I was like, is that how that works? Like, you just pick up random, like, people, and it's just like, and then they're introducing each other afterwards. I'm like, hey, Chris, huh. back in the late 70s, early 80s, yes, that's how it works. It was just so unnecessary for the plot line, too. Right. They could have just already known each other. Yeah, they could have been dating or whatever. It was just right. like, see, yep, that's how it had nothing to do with her hitchhiking and this movie. See, that's except a- for her making comments about, like, how she doesn't like it there. That's what happened in the 2004 or 5 version. They knew each other, so that's why they had the sex in the shower. Thanks, Dan. <laughs> Has no one seen the early 2004 no. version no. other than me and Chris? I blocked it out. Okay. Yeah, like, I don't remember. They had anything. sex in the shower. Terrific. Neat. <laughs> <laughs> because they knew each other. Way to, way to go, way to go Superman. Unlike this movie where a hitchhiker, hey, What's your name? Doesn't matter. Let's have sex. Cool. As he's as he's drinking a beer while he picks her up, right? Dude, he, oh god, I missed that part. Yeah, he was. was. Yeah. I didn't. I thought it was hilarious. Yeah, he's like, <laughs> oh he's like, wow, nineteen eighty, like, huh? Sip, <laughs> sip. I, like this is getting real uncomfortable. Ay, ay, ay. So I, I don't know. I thinking about this movie. I, I, I feel like the final two two murders or whatever by the ghost was just so was bad. Just, it was excessive because they so bad. How much effort they put into just killing six people? Just uh, come on, dude. Yep. The first three murders were cool. The, well, sorry, the first four mur- murders, I guess, were cool. The last two, bullshit. Especially <laughs> <laughs> the father at the end. That so here's one, what bothered me. That one. There were already people out on the water. Why yeah. didn't they just kill more people that night? I exactly. Thank you, Carrie. I don't have Thank answers. You. Because they weren't the ancestors. That's the issue. They were going but, after the ancestors. But I don't think any of them were, except the priest was related to them. That's the thing that bothers me. It's like they mm-hmm. don't go into it. The three people they killed on the boat it just happened to be three people on the boat. They, they weren't related. They weren't part of the six conspiracy. Well, I think the one person was. Though. And the random old lady apparently was one? I don't think so. The yeah. only one that was affiliated by the diary that the priest found was the was the priest right. that was alive now. But he, he was related because it was his grand his great grandfather or great 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 grandfather or whatever. And that was it. And the reason that he was such that he was brought up is because not only was there six conspirators that conspired to crash the ship full of lepers, he then screwed the six conspirators and stole all the gold to make, you know, the world's biggest flipping gold cross. Yeah, I was going to shove it in a wall. Thank you, Chris. I was going to say, man, he gave the gold back. Why did you have to cut his head off? Made no sense to me. Because six must die. Mm-hmm. But six you, is better than one. That's, you got you. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck off, Tim. <laughs> 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 you killed them all, though, man. Come on, you got your gold. You didn't need to cut the priest's heads off. That's bull. You can do better than well, that, John Carpenter. Well, I, I think there's a novelization or some expanded, written version of this that they do go into detail that everyone that died is linked back to the original founding members. They they explain it more in some novelization or some written material as opposed to really? what they got in the script. So they did kind of cover that their base is there but there's just that one thrown out line by the by the father that just says oh it's just six you know six founding members or whatever so he, he it was just mentioned there but there's no we don't know the linkage you know that everyone had but at least in the, the written version they did 
dive into it a little bit more to explain that. I was going to say, they wouldn't kill those other people without a link between the six people. Were there more than six then? Because, like, why did they go after Adrian Barbo? I don't know. Uh, I was assuming it was the six, like, sailors that got killed, and so it was, like, retribution. So, like, maybe I totally missed that. That's so, we so yeah, the six con- like so. What that was actually, the ghosts were the six conspirators coming for the gold. Blake was like they keep referring to him as Blake. He, if I remember correctly, unless he was the leper, I can't remember. I thought he was the leper. He might have been. We don't ass. even know. Yeah. Nobody knows. Yeah, <laughs> dude, I honestly don't remember. Dude, yeah. this whole plot is effed up, man. Well, like I said. Hello? I don't. The plot came after the fact. Oh, hello. I think we lost Dana. Dana? We oh. lost Dana. Dana's Six gone. Goes. Six must die. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yep. Oh no, my dog's outside my door, breathing heavy. I must be next. Hope he knocks first. I love Tim. He's my best friend. Okay. Sorry, Chris is my best friend. Tim, you okay. second. No. Okay. I don't. I don't. I honestly don't even know where we left off. I, I, I don't either because everything went dark. <laughs> I think, I, we were talking about the different conspirators or the ghosts, and we we're like, were they the conspirators or were they the people from the ship? Okay. And I was wrong. I think you guys were saying that the ghosts were indeed the um, people from the, the lepers. Ship. Yeah, the lepers. Yeah, because right. yeah. Yeah, that's yeah. why they had like the worms and stuff. But what's yeah. their faces were peeling off? Yeah, yeah. you know. What, but what's, what confused me a little bit is when the priest is like talking about how he basically screwed over the conspirators too and how he was like you know there was six la da 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 you know take me and it made it sound like he was just like all right like and then they kept talking about the money and the gold and it's like oh so are the conspirators so like why was that it's so unnecessary to bring it back up again like it just felt like it was overly complicated for no reason it was it was unnecessary to bring up gold at all right it just didn't yeah. have like revenge for killing me is one thing, but suddenly yeah. there's gold involved. Well, I mean, well, what you guys said earlier, he made this movie to be shorter than what the, I guess the critics or whatever was asking for. So he had to add some stuff into it. So maybe that's what he had to add into it to make it longer. I don't know. I guess you can only be a pirate if there's gold involved. I guess yeah, well, I, I do. I do know all the close look shots. Look at the Goonies, the man, and all the kill shots and all that were done after the initial movie was made. They were all stitched back in. Oh, really? Yeah, like because, like, if I remember correctly, they discussed it before they added all that stuff in there. John Carpenter has said, or some maybe it was Deborah Hill, like they said, you know, Halloween deserved a and you know the R rating. But they always thought that the Fox should have gotten a PG rating, um, because this was before PG thirteen, obviously, like was made. Um, but like you know, it was it was slapped in our rating. But watching it again, I'm thinking, well, I mean, there are like four or five, like you know, they showed that people get stabbed with a hook or a knife. I mean, one dude gets ran right through with a sword. Oh yeah. Uh, well, he gets. Well, yeah. Yeah. So I mean, it's but yeah. I, if I remember correctly, all those shots and a bunch of extra stuff was added on afterwards, and I think that's why the plot's kind of really convoluted. It's like John Carpenter went. He was with Deborah Hill. They were they were at Stonehenge and they saw the fog, and he was like, "I want to make a movie about the fog as a character," and that's what he did. And I feel like everything else just came in after the fact. It was like, "I'm making a movie about the fog. I really don't care what it's about." But I'm gonna have the fog in there as a character, and I'm gonna spend a lot of time making it look awesome, which I think they did. Yeah. You know, especially like how they had it. Like, um, if you ever watch out behind the scenes of how they like had to get the fog to behave like they did on the budget that they did, it was really interesting hmm. on how they went about doing it and stuff. But like, yeah, I feel like this a lot of the storytelling was after the fact. Yeah. I so I, when you were, when you were talking about this movie not being rated R, I was thinking it's like. I'm curious, is it really going to be, it's going to toe that line between PG and R for the time. And I kept thinking my barometer for what constitutes a PG movie of this time is Alex Kittner from Jaws getting bit, right? exploded yeah. in blood. Yeah. There's like no blood in this movie. No. No. It was, it was basically just, it really wasn't that much blood in Halloween either, but they did it. 
I mean, they act. I mean, there was there wasn't blood, but they showed the killing. But that's kind of I think how we wanted to do with go with this movie too. But doesn't they Halloween wanted to rooted? show the killing, but not the blood? But it was not as good as Halloween. It was it was just bad. Everything about this movie was bad. Well, I'm not going to say everything about this movie was bad. So I thought the special effects for the '80s is fine. The fog was cool. Um, the music, I, so I enjoyed the music. I, I think it, you, you can obviously tell it's very similar to Halloween in, in a lot of ways, but yeah, but I, I feel John Carpenter has a very, um, he understands music theory to a degree. I think that just a, in general, uh-huh. um, people don't, won't get, and, and you know, it's, it's fine. He, he deeply understands it. So it's not just like a, a copy and paste necessarily, but he has a way of really bringing out the best in um you know the time signatures he uses and, and a lot of that kind of stuff so it's to me i think he's he's really brilliant in that way um it just i i feel like just kind of what you're saying chris it's just he had the idea of what he wanted to do but not necessarily how to execute it and then when the you know the production everybody got involved and said well we need to make it longer it's just it just ended up warping the story. So I, yeah. I honestly, it just, it doesn't seem like this was something that he wanted necessarily, but you know, I, I can see why a lot of people really enjoy this film for what it is, you know, being a, a kind of ghost story. And I think in many ways it, the idea sounds better than it was executed. Uh-huh. So, and yeah, I know they tried to remake it and made it worse. So I, I honestly, I would love to see a sequel, a legit sequel made of this movie or a remake of this movie. It's based more on kind of what Carpenter may have envisioned and, you know, kind of, kind of go back to just making it a, a good solid ghost story. Cause I feel like there's something there, especially with the fog. I mean, I know there's some other movies, you know, similar that used fog as a, uh, as a plot device, but the, I feel like there's something there. It just, I, don't, I just don't think it was executed the way that probably Carpenter wanted. I, I agree. I feel, I feel like now it'd be, not, you know, with the technology the way it is, even if we were to like, you know, forego practical effects, there is, there's a story there. I mean, I, I, even though it was after the fact and like, I think my dad really likes to, the, the whole beginning with, with the captain telling the story, I, you know, it, it sets the mood. It, it does. Mm-hmm. It's, it, to me, this movie is not so much good from like a movie, like, perspective like it's not you know the story's not great yeah you know the acting's okay it's it to me it kind of sets the mood it's one of those movies like you, you, you turn down the lights maybe you know you got a cup hot cup of cocoa or tea or whatever you know popcorn and it just kind of sets that october autumn feel and that's why i think i like it it's more about the ambiance of the movie even sure. though it's not really fall so to say in the movie but it kind of feels like it is in there and it's a ghost story. And I think to me is like, that, that's why I like it. I don't know. That's how maybe the other fans maybe feel about it and stuff, but yeah. Well, then, you know, today driving in the car, it's, you know, it's obviously we're getting that time of year, you know, early in the morning fogs everywhere. And it just, it kind of, uh-huh. it feels like that. So, you know, I, I get that for sure. Well, here's the thing. It's like, you know, we're, we're right in the middle of, of what Halloween is. And we, we started out with the fog. So I think we're going to definitely redeem ourselves with Hocus Pocus because everyone talks about this goddamn movie. Take it back. <laughs> it's Take not it a back. goddamn movie, Tim, you son of a so bitch. Good. <laughs> I think you're not going to speak this movie that way. Uh, I'm, 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 just, nightmare out of you. I'm just joking because I have not seen it yet. Um, so I, I think it's going to be fun and I'm looking forward to it. And and everything, and so I, I think we'll totally redeem ourselves. <laughs> uh, but I think what you were saying to Dana is that and Carrie, just let's. So we've got we got these Carpenter movies done. Dana so far is over two on the Carpenter world. I agree that for one, I think Halloween at least needs to be seen, just because it's it is a the classic. But I'm also thinking the thing has to be watched to be a yes. final verdict to uh, see John Carpenter. does John Carpenter have any way of getting through to Dana who does not <laughs> prefer horror movies at all is there some redeeming quality that we can get from it you know the cool thing is is that I will give it a try so there I'm gonna go. find out regardless so we'll see 
Yeah, I'd say watch Halloween, watch the thing. Yes. And then, then make a judgment. I'm, yeah, I agree with Chris. I, the thing is a good movie. It's a good watch for sure. And Halloween, I mean, obviously, it's just, I mean, it's on, like, it started the 1st of October. It's like going to be on every day until probably, most likely, mid November. It's going to be playing. Right. So we'll try it. We'll see how it goes. And we'll let you know. But let's let's wrap up the fog here. Um, our rewatch ratings. Let's let's see how how this hits, and it might be a little interesting. But um, Carrie, how about we start with you? Oh God, you're gonna start. <laughs> oh yeah. So what, I I ended up giving it a four, right? Yep. Yeah. So it was, I would say, marginally better than I remembered. Like, now that I'm an adult, I think I just appreciated it a little bit more. Kind of like Chris was saying, it just kind of, like, sets the mood for the fall. Like, I don't know. It was, in that way, it was kind of fun. And, um, God, you want my score, Tim? You're going to make me go first with my score. Uh I want to hear it. Uh Oh, God. I will say a (laughs) 4.5. Oh, wow. It went up. It did go up marginally. Now that I'm an adult, I feel like I could appreciate it a little bit more. It's not an enthusiastic 4.5, it's just a 4.5. It's, a, it's an adult 4.5. Okay yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's, an, <laughs> it's a mature 4.5. <laughs> Again, with Dana, though, like just to speak to what you guys were saying, Dana, I do enjoy Halloween a lot a lot more. So like, if you are going to watch a John Carpenter movie, I feel like you and I are kind of on the same page. Like, If I had been Usually. around for Big Trouble, oh my god, like Chris would have hated me forever. So <laughs> I'm kind of glad. Um, but, you know, definitely watch Halloween. It's it's like so iconic. You have to see it. I, but, it's a good I, I, movie. I, I, it, I, it's a good movie, good plot. Everything like, about Halloween is good. I mean, the, Definitely the watch good. Halloween, but I will say this. Like, we talk about how The Fog Slows to like a snail's pace at times. So does Halloween. Uh, totally. It, it it does. Like just heads up. Like is it better than the movies you've seen so far? Yes. But like there are like like I said, I was watching it Thursday, uh, a little bit on AMC, and I forgot how long some of those panning shots are of just them talking about nothing relevant. And I get why they're doing it, but like. Even even I was like, "Come on, and you know, let's go here." But if yeah. you have to pick between the two, I obviously say watch both Halloween and The Thing. I do feel like cinematically, overall, The Thing is a better movie. Really? Yes. I feel like the pace thing, though, like just I'm... to kind of set as a redeeming thing here. Like I feel like everything around that time that were like horror films, I kind of feel that same way about. They're very though, slow. They are. They like are. They're... even The Exorcist, it's kind of yes. like okay, well, it's kind of slow. So nowadays, yeah. so it's I like don't... Friday the Friday the Thirteenth, right? Like, no, you're absolutely right. I just for some reason I feel like he really just hit his stride really, 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 really well with the thing and maybe and i also think it's because of the, the cast is a phenomenal cast too not to say that halloween isn't but like uh the cast in the thing and i think the whole arctic setup and i don't know it to me it's it's one of my it's one of my favorite like sci-fi horror movies so anyways that's my that's my rant about that carry in with a 4.5 so dana okay um you went with I... a five because you were you were hopeful but again, you had the same look <laughs> in your eyes watching this film as you did Big Trouble. So, yeah, um, I, I'm. I mean, it, obviously, it's not a surprise that it's going to go a little lower, but I, I'm going to stick with a four for it. So, I mean, I still it 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 had potential for me. So, I mean, it wasn't like the worst. Again, it wasn't the worst thing I've seen. It just, I don't know. We are so on the same page, Dana. The only reason yeah. I gave it the extra point five is because I was like, it has potential, and I loved the like score. You know, it yeah. was just one of those like, I'm like, okay, cool, but totally agree. Yeah, exactly. I mean, and again, it's like I realized too is it's just like these are probably not the best examples of John Carpenter for me. So it's one of those where I'm like, I'm just gonna leave it there. But that's not like a terrible score. It's just one of those where I'm like, eh. Okay. <laughs> yeah, it's a five. A five, you know, it's it's a very it's it's middle of the road. Well, she said four, but oh, I'm sorry. My apologies. I got <laughs> four point five four. Yeah, all right. Yeah. I'm rounding up, guys. Give it to me. 
It's okay. <laughs> what does she um, get big trouble? That's kind, of, that's kind of better than I thought it, she was going to give it, so. Okay, I'm going to preface before Tim tells you whatever my score was for Big Trouble. I think I was afraid to lower it at that point because <laughs> it was still pretty early on. I don't know that whatever score I gave Big Trouble is fair because I have a feeling that even though it's written in stone on that podcast, I don't even know if I would give it a two at this point. Oh, my God. Damn. Damn. I would have given it a two for sure. I'm right there with you. (laughs) Damn. Wow. So so that one, no, that one's different. But, like, I I don't know that my score would be accurate because I got a feeling I gave it a four. But I feel like that was a very pressured four. Oh, yeah. We totally, whatever you did, give, we totally pressured you into that. <laughs> exactly. So I'm going to say that that might not be accurate. <laughs> no, I, no, I I totally agree with you. We, we, we made you kind of do. That. You guys kind of bullied me. Damn it, Dana. It could have been more than that, though. That movie's amazing and you know it. No. Don't say it. How dare you? <laughs> it's an amazing movie. Tim, so, what did I give it? So Dana gave it a four. Yeah, okay. okay. So I'll like tell you what, is... guys. Let me let me reveal something. So for our one year birthday, which is gonna be January, not this December, whatever we did for Home Alone. In Dude. January listen okay. in January, <laughs> I wanna have a special episode where we can just sit down and talk about everything we re reviewed over the last year. Um and maybe keep like a a side asterisk note for the movies that we reviewed. And if there's something we want to change, we can, but just on the side. So Chris, what do you get your score? <laughs> Am I up? Like, is that, is it, is it my turn? I mean, I don't, I don't control this podcast anymore. So yeah, you, it's, 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 it's been off the rails about the last hour. So I love you guys. This is now the Thank Spash you. show. Chris, I'm giving you a bear hug next time I see you. That's cool, man. I'll tase you. You get uh, <laughs> You're getting the biggest hug ever, dude. Let's see. My score. I gave it what an eight point five, I believe, in our last uh, uh, beginning part of this podcast. Something like that, yeah. Tim, could you please check the records? I was letting Spaz run it, but yeah, you did. No, Spaz was gonna tell me like a number. He's like, "Oh, you give it blueberry muffins and happy dances." Like, <laughs> Don't like a number. you say blueberry muffins because I really want those now. Just, just sit there quietly and think about blueberry muffins while I talk for a minute then. So hungry. Um, all right. I gave it 8.5. I'm going to say, I got to be honest, I'm going to bring it down a little bit. Like I like I said, nostalgia wise, I rank it high because it was an opportunity to spend time watching a movie with my dad that he really liked. And I had and a lot of fun. And your best friend. And good memories. And so I did watch it again with my dad last oh. night. Um, I said sit there in silence and think about blueberry muffins. All right. Oh, can't even say can't even say my name in there. No, no, oh, I'm talking here. Sit down. Yeah, uh, an asshole. Love you. Uh, Great muffins. Mm. So I watched it last night with my dad, and I gotta say, it dragged a little bit. And even though I love the ambiance of it, and it kind of sets the mood for like Halloween and fall, I gotta bring it down to seven point seven five. Wow, that's a nice. All right, I thought it was gonna be a little bit bigger, bigger drop than that. Wait, hold on. No, no. I mean, I still find it fun, kind of funny at times. Uh, and I, I like John Carpenter, except for John Carpenter's vampires. <laughs> oh, dude, I hate you. So I hate your face so much. So I, mean, I haven't seen it in months, but I hate it. So yeah, I'm gonna give it a seven point seven five. Maybe even a seven five to be honest with you, like like a whole point down. Actually, Tim, let's go with that because, like like I said, the movie's not a great movie. It's just a fun movie, and it has a special place uh, in my book because of the nostalgia. That's pretty much what it is. All right, I'm glad you uh, lowered it down to seven point five. So I was gonna get kind of angry. <laughs> <laughs> Why you don't like my arbitrary numbers? I don't. I don't like going into the. The hundredth of a, of a number. <laughs> seven point seven three with a, a repeating decimal. It's too much math, Chris. Stop it. Hey, hey I'm all about math, man. I'm. Good. I was. I was, never, I, was, I was never told Love I had math. to use certain, you know, math whole number terrible. or only halves, you know. So I mean, if we're adding decimal points, all bets are off. All right, that's fine. I'll allow it. But no, seven five is what I was going with. Yeah. Okay. All right, Spaz. Your time to shine. All right, so 
I think I gave it a seven and a half. Uh, straight seven. Oh, okay. All right. Um, so mine is also going to drop, but I think I'm going to drop it down to uh, I'm going to drop it down to a six because the first part of the movie, like I said, like during uh, when they were talking around the campfire, that kind of got me hooked into it. Got me psyched up for this movie because I didn't re- I didn't really remember it, but I also have this nostalgia of watching this movie with my best friend. Nope. And his dad in his basement. So, and then it also kind of had this poltergeist thing in it too, like uh, with a, I think there was like a, like a TV theme, uh, like set going off in the beginning of the movie. And the, it turned on, yes, yeah, the, yeah, the TV turning on and the the pump, the, the pump handle coming off and the lift going up and down or or just going up, kind of had me the semblance of like a poltergeist thing. So I'm gonna give it a six because it just kind of reminded me of the good old days of watching poltergeist and watching this movie with my best friend Chris and his dad, and also then watching, you know. Close Encounters of the Third Kind in after this movie, so it was a good time back then with my best friend Chris. Uh-huh. Love you, Chris. This is the most aggressive name dropping I think I've like ever heard. <laughs> <laughs> well, what can I say? My best friend Chris. Uh, well, here we are. It's my oh, turn. Best friend. Go ahead, Tim. I'll allow it to happen. Thank you. You asshole. Yes. I'm on. So here we are. This. Oh, Jesus Christ! Just let me talk. <laughs> Yeah, it's getting to be about time there where you got to start muting yourself there, Buttercup. <laughs> so, so here we are. We're we're exploring Halloween, and when I look at these movies, I, I try to think just like you were saying, Chris. I want to get in the mood for Halloween. The season, there's a lot of stuff that can really kind of get you there, and especially in these times of COVID and this virus is just screwing everything up. Nothing feels right. Nothing feels the same. We're relying on our entertainment, movies, television, music, what have you, to kind of get us in that mood. So, and candy. Can't forget about the candy after all that talk we had. Um, Yep. And in the last episode, we started talking about all these movies that remind us of Halloween. It's just like, it just got me pumped and ready for the season. And I was really excited because there's a lot of movies, like I said, I don't really watch this genre of movie very often. I don't go out of my way to watch horror or Halloween movies necessarily. So I'm I'm definitely open to giving things a chance. Um, and Chris, I know you said that you don't really care for like the, the torture porn like movies of yeah, like Hostel uh, and, uh-huh. and and stuff like that. Um, I for some reason I do. Maybe that just maybe I'm weird. Maybe that says something about me deep, on a deep level. But, <laughs> I mean, <laughs> wow. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Like you like, like those movies? I don't mind them. Ugh. No, just, it, really? It, it's each to their own. You know what? I I try – you know what? Each, everyone has different flavors of what they enjoy, right? Like I just – yeah, I have a hard time with them. It's like, yeah, I, I've, I've watched Saw. It's just like – it's just – it's so twisted and demented that I'm kind of like, okay. All right, whatever. Uh, but never mind. Let's <laughs> – uh, <laughs> okay, well, we'll skip uh, that road. <laughs> yeah, I'll, I'll go back to Nightmare Before Christmas and singing Jolly Tunes. But um, when I look at this movie – there was a couple things I was looking for, and for one, does it get me? Does it, does, do I feel like it's Halloween? And then, in a way, yeah, I do. There's there's the music that sense that overwhelming sense of dread. I think was kind of throughout the whole thing, uh-huh. and a, a lot of what we talked about already. It, it it felt like it was just so much added to get it to the bare minimum for it to qualify as a theatrical movie. Um, that I felt like it just it dragged on a bit. The like I said, the ghosts were trolls. They did a lot of things that just seemed unnecessary. The knocking. Yeah, the, the knocking. I mean, I, I wrote down every single weird thing that happened as a result of the ghosts. And I was just like, okay, we could have cut it down at like 16. Uh-huh. It just, but it just kept going. But, you know, I mean, some of the, the really the, the jump scares had nothing to do with the ghosts. They just had situations that caused a jump scare, like the priest hiding in the <laughs> shadows. I mean, ah, so <laughs> that part was when he reaches his arm out and right. Huh. So I'm, um, you know, there were certain elements of like, yeah, they're they're just going for it a little bit. Um, but so there was, I was optimistic for this film, and I felt kind of let down in some areas. So 
this is kind of my long way of saying is while I did come out and give this a seven because I was hopeful, it didn't quite meet my expectations um, for what I was hoping for. But at the same time, it's an 80s horror film with those kind of elements. With a shoestring so, budget. Right. Yeah. It's for what we say it was a million, one point one million dollars. Yeah, yeah. And a lot of that going into the special effects with the, the fog and stuff like that. And I, I hey, having that, you know, that pirate ship kind of roll through well, that was kind of cool. Uh-huh. You know? But I wanted more. I wanted more out of the ghosts. I wanted more, you know, throughout the whole thing and not just in the first fifteen and then the final twenty. But um that's just yeah, like I said, this is my long way of saying I'm gonna I'm gonna bring it down to a five. It's Oof. just kinda just kinda hovers in the middle for me of uh you know, if you want, like, maybe this is one of those things that if it's on AMC or whatever, just binging Holly, you know, the, these Halloween classics uh-huh. or something that if it's on, maybe I'll just have it play in the background. But I don't see myself going out of the way to watch this again. I will listen to the score for sure, because when I actually heard the score, when I was prepping for the last episode, um, kind of, you know, cutting in the music, I'm like, oh, I've heard this before. I never knew it was the fog. So it yeah it does have that halloween vibe to it so that there's some similarity there but it's it's uniquely john carpenter for sure and it to me john carpenter is halloween uh-huh. uh, not just the movie but just in general it's like that kind of music is is the kind of stuff you hear people playing on their porch as you're trick-or-treating and stuff like that so for me that wins it that says that yes this is halloween the movie itself just kind of fell short so which is fair but I have to ask you, because of our history with a certain John Carpenter film, I'm not sure if you directed it or not, I can't remember, but it's part of the franchise. Do you rank this better or worse than Halloween 3, Season of the Witch? <laughs> so I knew you were going to go there. Yep. Um, better. Actually, better. <laughs> <laughs> See, I don't know, because what were we, 13? Yeah. Did we watch that movie? It was and, like, out of all the, what is it? You rented it. Out of all yeah. the Halloween movies available to us, you're like, I got Halloween 3, that Season movie of the Witch. Was shit, I'm sorry. I'm, I can't help myself. I, I, that movie was garbage. Shit. <laughs> There's no Michael Myers in that movie. Shit. I know. I know. This movie, to... Even with all of its bad plots and storylines and everything, I'm sorry. If you're going to make a Halloween movie and not have John, uh, Mike Myers in it or. Jamie Lee Curtis, kiss my ass. It's not a Halloween movie. Well, technically she's in it. Fine. Technically he's correct. Not. The best kind of correct. But she's like, kind yeah, of it. it's because they were attempting to make an anthology esque type of series, and they were trying something different. And it they need so to bad. kiss my ass because that movie sucked ass. So I'm trying to remember. I mean, it was just weird as a 13 um, year old just like watching this. Like, okay, so. Okay, so these these masks are turning uh, whatever. I need it. So I was just talking to people online about this. Actually, I think it was today or yesterday about Halloween three, and I need to see it again because I there's no way I could have appreciated that film as yes. a thirteen year old. Just and yeah, you know I I haven't seen it since. All I have is my memory of wondering what the heck I just watched. I saw it again. I don't know. It's been quite a while, but I did see it again. Like. Look, if you go in, not obviously not expecting Mike Myers and such. I mean, it's still not a good movie, it's, but it is it is a lot better than when we watched it when we were thirteen, if you will. It's not good. No, it's not good. I didn't say it's it was not a good. Movie. It's it, it's terrible. I'm sorry. It's it's a bad movie. That is a, that is out of ten, a one point five movie. It's shit. I will never like that movie. I can. I'm sorry. Maybe wrong person ask. Oh yeah, I hate that movie. I hate. It. Now you well, got, now you got me all pissed off. Oh well, so, now? Well, Donnie's not here, so this is the only thing okay. that can piss me off right now. Well, I can tell you one thing: is that theme song has never left my brain, and I, <laughs> I, I, I hate the movie for that reason alone. Silver Shamrock. Shut up, Chris. <laughs> I don't know. So I honestly, I would give that movie another shot as now that I kind of know what to expect mm-hmm. a little bit. I want to, I want to see it again to see if it's, if it just to change my opinion. Right. Of that movie. Yeah. I never want to watch that movie again in my life ever. So if somebody wants to sponsor us, watch Shut up, Tim. <laughs> <laughs> no, uh. I, 
I that would probably be I would probably refuse. I'd be out on that week. Mm. I'm not okay. watching that movie again. I'm sorry. It's crap. Mm. Fair enough. So with all of our stores scores combined, uh that brings our average to a five point four. <laughs> oh, geez, and uh, Chris, I hate you, Chris. <laughs> <laughs> I hate you so much. Uh, so with a 5.4, I actually dropped our score down by 0.9, Oof. and it hovers just above Bad Boys. So even after all this crap <laughs> talking about this movie, it's still better than Bad Boys. <laughs> you know what? That pisses me off. How long? How low do I have to go to get a below Bad Boys? Nope, no take backs. It, des- yeah. it deserves to be a below Bad Boys. Nope. I got that. All right, I give it a two, Tim. Switch my number two. Um, in all your sales final. In your mind, go ahead. No, I'm just kidding. It's not worse than Bad Boys. It really isn't. It's a good movie still. So so with that, guys, um, yeah, maybe that wasn't the, the best movie for us to jump into. But Whatever. However, however, this is, you know, this has a uh, a spot in, in Chris's heart. And you know what? We we promised you when we started this, like we were going to dive into your, your Halloween movies that that really means something to you. And I'm happy that we did because for one, I would not have gone out of my way to watch this movie. I know Dana wouldn't have. And um, at least, you know, we gave John Carpenter an an honest to goodness shot again. (laughs) It fell flat for Dana, but you know what? (laughs) I mean, I mean, when it it boils down to it, you guys' choices, my top two choices was this or Pumpkinhead. So Pumpkinhead would have been so much better, dude. Uh, I love Pumpkinhead. I mean, so do I, but I feel like Tucker, dude. I, I thought we were doing till Dale and Tucker ran out of time, man. Ran yeah. out of time. Sorry, but okay. I want to. I want to say that. Okay, I haven't seen Pumpkinhead either, but I'm actually glad that that you chose. Like they, you kept pushing on this movie, Chris, because it's just like it means something to you. And yeah. to me, that's that right there. That's enough reason to do it. So I'm I'm well, glad I mean, you did. You brought it up in every podcast. Yes, right. yes, and that too. This is about nostalgia, right? Yeah. Like, exactly. so it should be something like that, connected to. Yeah, this yeah. is like my super nostalgic, like, yeah. like film. Um, yeah, that's... Pumpkin is just a really good movie. Yeah, yeah, but see, lie. like, sorry, Dan, go ahead. No, I, I mean, I, I really have that opinion though, where it's just like, I'm glad that we went with this one because I'm like, you know what? It meant something. That's what this whole thing's about. Is it's yeah. just like restoring, like what we thought versus what it is now. And exactly. I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm really good. glad you did it. Well, thanks. Yeah. yeah I, I'm, I am glad you did this too. Cause it's like a, it's been 20 plus years since I saw it. So I wasn't going to, I probably, if it wasn't for this podcast, I probably wasn't going to watch it again unless it was on TV. And I was like, Oh, Hey, look, it's the fog. Here it is. Other than that, I'm, I am glad. Thank you, Chris. Uh huh. So maybe we'll pencil it in right now, the pump, pumpkin head and the pumpkin king for next October. There it is. <laughs> there it is. There I'll it is. take two different movies for two hundred, Alex. <laughs> we need uh, tell. We got to do Dale and Tucker though, dude. We have that. That's got to be penciled in for next year for sure. You know what? Honestly, we could do Dale and Tucker anytime because it's not necessarily a Halloween movie. It's just an awesome. Yeah. Awesome I, movie. I, that, yes. That is true. That's very true. very true. I don't know about you guys, but I've only seen Tucker and Dale. Oh, well, fuck off! Oops, whatever. <laughs> Same damn names. Just I in the wrong place. I can't believe I'm to this. I have what? never seen that movie, uh, and I feel like of every movie we've talked about, that's like the only time that's happened. Did Carrie just say Incubus? Because I love Hoopastank or uh, no, not even close. Nope. But, uh, <laughs> oh my gosh! <laughs> I'm sorry. I, I thought we had to end this the end this one like we ended the first episode. I am not quoting Incubus, not, thank you. 2000, <laughs> early 2000s music. There we go. Hold on. Come on. Let's hold the wheel and drive. All right. There it is! <laughs> it's got it! I think Dana just ended it properly. Love you. Oh, God. <laughs> well played, Dana. Well played. Well, meet me in outer space, guys. All right. Oh, no. It's just there science. It there it is. <laughs> Maybe Tim might have ended it properly. Oh, uh, so with that, um, I guess thanks for listening. <laughs> <laughs> There's no guess. Thank you uh, for being with us on this journey. I feel like we say this all the we say this all the time. Like, hey, Tim, good luck editing. Good luck editing, Tim. This one's yeah. gonna suck. Yes. Tim, you suck ass. Enjoy your property, biatch. 
Why did I say so I, property? I don't know. I'm really <laughs> so I'm really looking forward to our next episodes because we're we're jumping into Hocus Pocus. Hocus? I am Hocus. Oh, I'm so excited. This is, oh this is the first God. I'm sorry, I'm so excited. To... This is the first time that we're seeing a movie that I am the only one that has never seen this before. Tim, I still find it so bizarre. Tim sucks. Tim sucks. It's it is surprising, and everyone talks this movie up. I think the last episode when we kind of talked our favorite movies, you all mentioned Hocus Pocus. Mm-hmm. Obviously, like it's just so, like it's just it's, it's surprising that you've even seen part of it. Because Tim I, sucks. Not there's not one thing I can think. I don't even know what this movie is about. Oh so my I, god! I, oh my god! I like I really don't even want to prepare for it because i want to just go into it just totally blind. i kind of want you to go in blind oh my too god and, it, and then we just like ad hoc it after the fact so you know what i'll do the work this time i'm gonna tell dana what i do and she can get things going and then we'll just go blind i'm sorry to everybody for that but I'm <laughs> <laughs> dana to be honest with you it might be better than what tim does oh <gasps> how dare you tim does a good job oh my Tim's god okay. Tim's okay. I think I think Dana should host I the think, next episode. I'm pretty mm-hmm. sure I'm going to get booted off this podcast. <laughs> I mean... Oh, we're no, still get, well, if I get booted, are we still friends, Tim? So thanks for listening. <laughs> <laughs> the mood. Don't worry, friends. We are still friends-ish. I don't think that's what they're concerned about. <laughs> I think it might be. Cause that's what you should be concerned about. If I'm not back next week, I'm dead because Tim killed me. Good. Hmm. Or maybe I make Chris. It or maybe no. both of them. Does that mean I'd have to see you? You miss me. How dare you? You no, 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 man. Tim, just record. I'm going to start swearing. Yes, Tim, just re- dis- dis- record, Tim. <laughs> <laughs> start just <dis> recording. <laughs> uh, man, no, bitches. No. All right. Let me wrap this up. All right. Let me do it. Yeah. <laughs> so. Just record. Before- before I turn off this microphone and kick Dan out and change the password, um, Fuck. I, I just want to say that after last week's episode where we gave a shout out to uh, Ben Birdperson, he actually sponsored us again, bought us some more candy for Halloween. So I just want to give him a thank you um, for supporting us again. I mean, you really didn't have to do that, uh, but it's it, it means a lot to us, especially for a small podcast. We're just trying to scrape by. Obviously, you can tell. Uh, so... Really appreciate it. Thanks for the Twizzlers. Thank, uh, you. thank you for the support. Thank you. I love Twizzlers. Thank you. Absolutely. And for those that made it this far, uh, we're looking to record our next episode of uh, How Would Sean Bean Have Died? So if anyone wants to jump in and have a suggestion, let us know. Uh, we're, we're planning this out now. So if there's something that you're interested in or one of the movies we've reviewed that you want to jump in on, um, just hey. Just let us know, and we're always looking for people to join us for some fun. And uh, we're looking to hopefully get one in in October, but we'll see. So thank you if you've made it this far. Looking forward to Hocus Pocus. Let's do it right. Let's let's end October on a high note with Hocus Pocus and really jam this one out. And look forward to your next host, Dana, who's going to take us there. Yay, oh God, Dana! Thing. What the heck? This is really a thing. Who? Hell yeah, it is. Okay, we're well, fine. I'm going to take up this job. Watch out, everybody. You're going to be great. (laughs) Thanks, guys. (laughs) I am taking a vacation. (laughs) Uh, All right. You saucy minx. Oh, that's horrifying. (laughs) Dude, happy Halloween, bitches.